Okay, everyone, let's see if we can change some minds tonight. This week, the popular social media and video sharing app TikTok hit a critical milestone that previously had only been achieved by Facebook. TikTok has been downloaded more than 3 billion times. Now, this doesn't include game apps, uh, but as far as non-game apps go, uh, at this point, the only one else to have hit that milestone is Facebook or other apps that have something to do with Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Messenger. Monthly active users for the two apps, Facebook and TikTok, are hardly comparable. While TikTok has 732 million monthly active users, Facebook has 2.85 billion. Uh, so it's kind of interesting that TikTok is now past that milestone. And I'm kind of curious like if it's just gonna continue to grow the monthly active users. But I'm also kind of curious if those monthly active users are actual people. Uh, TikTok's popularity rose during the pandemic as more people found themselves at home during lockdowns around the globe. Not so much in America because we never really did a proper lockdown. Uh, the, app, the app has not been without some recent controversy. One bug that was brought to light by content creator Ziggy Tyler uh, was that TikTok's creator marketplace was flagging phrases like Black Lives Matter, supporting Black people, supporting Black voices, and supporting Black success as inappropriate content. However, the phrases supporting white supremacy and I am a neo-Nazi, I really hope no one ever takes that out of context, and I am an anti-Semitic, again, I really hope no one takes that out of context, was not flagged as inappropriate. Insider reported that the company spokesperson, a, a, a company spokesperson, uh, apologized for the significant error and said that what that creator was seeing was a, uh, the result of an automatic filter set to block words associated with hate speech. So that's a pretty embarrassing bug if you're trying to convince people that your app, it doesn't have an intended agenda. I'm going to pause you real quick. Can you say that one more time for me? The part where uh, significant error, can you just, I want, because this is important. Let's just, can you run that yeah. for me one more time? If you wouldn't of mind. course. Yeah. A, a company spokesperson for TikTok apologized for the significant error and said that that creator was seeing what they were seeing was a result of automatic an automatic filter set to block words associated with hate speech which is the most uh, ironic statement considering it was Thank not you. flagging neo-nazi anti-semitic and white supremacy the like fucking definition of hate speech here in america but the movements against it got flagged isn't that incredible yeah that's fucking horseshit yeah that i Not was like in the language yeah that that bug to call it a bug to me is just like i i don't think that's what's happening it's ingenuous as fuck it's trash they know exactly what the fuck is happening they know very goddamn well that conservative bullshit and hate like that travels fast yeah. the truth and, does not travel as fast yeah and it's kind of like speaking of irony um it's kind of ironic that conservatives are so uh big about on TikTok because you may remember um, that former, and I really want to emphasize former for anyone watching and who may be confused, but former President Trump attempted to ban TikTok. And so like the fact that there's a high number of users that are uh, questioning the election, questioning vaccine science, and uh, still supporting him, despite him being the former and, and again, I want to emphasize former president. Um, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of irony with this app. Um, we should give them back parlor. There you go. Yeah, I was like, I, I, I hate to think that TikTok is the next parlor. And I feel like if we don't want that to happen, like non parlor esque content creators should just keep flooding the ether with uh, appropriate content. There's a surprisingly high number of users that are spreading misinformation on the integrity of the election, the tech integrity and the results of the election, as well as dangerous information about the COVID-19 pandemic and the vaccine. One viral audio that stated, and here's a quote, you're telling me in 40 years of research, there's no vaccine for HIV, for cancer, no vaccine, the common cold, no vaccine. Yet in one year, we've developed a vaccine for COVID-19, and you want me to take that? Thanks, but no thanks. That was used in more than 4,500 videos and viewed more than 16 million times. 
So in some of these areas where we have low vaccination rates um, and because people are, you know, concerned about like new tech, you know, new technology that comes with the uh, or medical advances, I won't say technology. That's horrifying. 16 million times that that people and there's no there's no science behind what the individual stated. And it's just people using that audio over and over and over again. And if you say something three times, people are likely to believe it. So if you want someone to believe a lie, say it three times. If you if, so if someone says it 16 million times, that is horrifying. Like this is like this is not just me shooting from the hip. We know like we know that misinformation, disinformation, especially of the right wing flavor, it moves fast on social media. Like that is what we're up against. Also, something that's kind of uh, controversial about TikTok is that there is disproportionately it seems to be a lot of bans within the people not spreading the misinformation about the vaccine and elections. Um, and this can be attributed to banning services where you actually pay people to uh, mass report, which is possible because of a significant number of users being pro cancel culture with anti science and hateful rhetoric um, that is against, you know, left leaning creators or just people in general for like basic human decency. Um, they're being targeted with mass reporting. Additionally, uh, some creators, especially in the black community, are boycotting uh, TikTok because, or striking essentially, because uh, there's just too much stolen content and cultural appropriation. And there is a, a concern of bots that TikTok is going to become the new Twitter, and that bots are also attributing to the mass banning services. I'm going to let Matt, uh, his own um, personal, what's your personal take on like good people hell. getting banned? Do you got any, you want, uh, you got any you personal want, experience with that? You want my personal experience on TikTok bans. So I jumped on this little app five months ago. I was like, well, what's this? Right. And, uh, we we're pushing a pretty good message, man. You know, we were talking about trying to bring, you know, equality to an injustice society, right. And unjust, unjust society, how the fuck you want to say it and got to 90 K um but here's the thing like people with millions of followers like i speak uh was at 1.3 he got taken down people with hundreds of thousands of followers people with thousands of followers people with hundreds of followers it really doesn't matter because there's lots of people who are sending the same message i am to some extent who are just trying to think beyond themselves and apparently TikTok doesn't like that very much um and it gets worse and worse man so for example like let's put it this way so right now uh 3.0 is up right it's been down now for what nine days 10 days I haven't been able to post in all that time, obviously, right? It went down. The day I woke up, it went down because there were six videos that had been reported and six videos had gone down for content violations. Over that time, all six won, all right? But while I was down for a content violation, another video from like weeks ago had been flagged, which counts as another strike, which means a repeated strike, which means an extended ban, right? So after all those got cleaned up, I thought it was gonna be in the clear after the seven day one ended, 29 minutes without even posting, doing anything, Repeated violations, seven day ban. How, how is that possible? It's, how is that fucking possible? It's not possible. Cause I literally haven't even done anything on the page. You oh, shit, it's, it's, it's not possible. So no, I know, I know how it's possible. It's uh, coordinated because you're on someone's shit list, Matt. Oh, there it is. And whose shit list could that be? The people who hate cancel culture, who literally have a list of all these creators and who they literally just on repeat go and just report their actual page. And they go through all their videos and report all their videos because the dipshit Republicans who scream cancel culture love to cancel things. That's what slavery was. That's what Jim Crow was. That's why women couldn't vote, right? There's a whole list of things we can talk about, real, actual life canceling, but you projecting little infantile pieces of shit are the, ah, it's it's crazy. Republicans can get bent. And that's why I, all you liberals out there, including like boys and people like that, if you're still playing nice with Republicans, part of the problem. I just want to point out that Matt has um, personally called out the creator of the trickle up and that I don't necessarily endorse everything he said. And um, I hope we get invited next back next Thursday, boys. I call out. Yeah, I shouldn't have done. I, I picked out voice on purpose, though, because like voice is a big boy, so he can handle it. Yeah, he, I'm sure he agreed with like 99 percent of your statement there. Uh, for anyone watching in the in the chat, I'm kind of curious, like, do you guys think TikTok is a sinking ship? Uh, or do you think we should stick around to try and dispel the misinformation that's going around? 
we have the numbers and they know that, right? Look at the popular vote, the last seven, eight we've won, right? We account for more GDP, right? We have more, like we should have more representation within Congress, things like that, right? We know the numbers, they know the numbers. That's why they're reacting like this. So why don't we show them what we can actually do like as a collective if we were to all act? which goes back to the general strike, right? Which is gonna take everyone, frankly, uh, which goes back to this battle on social media, which is ground zero of the new like wars, what I'm gonna call it, quote unquote, because in this like new like society that we live in right now, it doesn't look like what like it used to look like, right? Communication is completely different. We can connect with people. This is a tired line, but I'm gonna keep repeating it every time because it's vital that we understand this. We couldn't have had conversations like this even like 20 years ago, really. All right. We couldn't have done this. Uh, we couldn't have me and uh, Shai could never met. I could never have met Boyce. I could never have met uh, some of the people in here. Um, this gives us an amazing fucking tool. Look at what's happened in the Middle East to some extent with the Arab Springs about a decade ago and things like that. Right. People were able to see beyond their sphere. They're able to connect with people beyond their sphere and they're able to have different conversations that kind of changed up their echo chamber. Right. So, of course, you can create your echo chamber on here if you want to. Right. You can do that anywhere in life. Um, but this is an amazing tool if we utilize it um, and we can. That's what. So to that point, I'm saying, nah, dive into it, dive into TikTok, dive into Twitter, dive into Facebook. It just it can't be only social media. You got to have these conversations with your uh, uh, friends, family members, peers, coworkers, uh, teammates. You got to you got to separate yourself from the uh, the bad takes that are coming from some Republicans and some conservatives. But in the same way, we don't leave TikTok, we don't leave some of those conversations. There's a difference between confrontation and conversation. Yeah. Right. So there's a difference between dialoguing with people who you know you can't actually dialogue with and just making sure you don't concede space to them in an arena is what I would argue. Yeah, I, did, I didn't have this in my bingo card because the uh, Grateful Sea Dog's like really awesome. And I was like, huh, I wouldn't have guessed that you would send in nasty emails, but like, you know, I support that. Everyone like, should yeah, be sending messages. That's helped some people. So some people have been taken down. Uh, it, a lot of their followers just sent um, emails to community management, things like that. There's a few different ones to do. And it helps because in the end, like TikTok doesn't like, don't get me wrong, like they have an agenda, but they, they do in the end, they want engagement and they do know that people drive engagement. Um, so it's a weird little line they're trying to walk right now. Yeah, I, I endorse this. I endorse this 100%. And I think people are skeptical because they want it immediately. And I'm like, yeah, no, we don't we don't get it day one. But like, if we start working towards this, for sure, we have the numbers to overwhelm the disinformation and overwhelm the hateful rhetoric. People got to be willing to like step into it, man. Like, I, like, believe me, dude, I get it. Every single day, every single day of my life, I'm having some kind of contentious conversation with someone about this shit. And it is emotionally like, like it, it's tiring, but it is not as tiring as the existence and, and the like experience that some people have to deal with in this country. The conversations I'm having are just conversations for me. This is some people's lived experience. So if I'm tired, imagine how tired some demographics are in this country. And again, everyone, make sure you're subscribed to uh, Mute the Media 3.0, 4.0, and 5.0, or follow, not subscribe, and uh, follow Cheyenne for UBI. And definitely subscribe to The Trickle Up and then youtube.com slash Mute the Media. We have to be comfortable being uncomfortable, difficult conversations. Yeah. Right thing is going to step on some people's toes sometimes because not everybody wants to do the right thing. We're not a monolith as a species. Yeah, and I don't think people realize the, the leverage that we have as a collective. And there's a lot of really awesome uh, content creators on TikTok. And I would also say that they are epic on uh, Twitter as well. In fact, they normalized making video responses like way before any of us ever did that. Uh, so I wanna shout out District 12 Kitty. Uh, they are the epitome of amazing. Uh, I could ramble on and on at how uh, epic their takes are and just uh, they're personally one of the reasons that I'm here and just being engaged in uh, social media in general, just because they were like, saw value in what I had to say in tweets and were like, I'm gonna make you part of a, a group chat and then you're gonna feel like you belong and you're gonna be validated for what you're doing. And uh, yeah, it's uh, the, the it really snowballed into something pretty awesome, Kitty, so thank you for that. And I'm gonna put in the chat a GoFundMe that District 12 Kitty has. Uh, because not unlike so many Americans, 
they're just up against odds that are completely out of their own personal circumstances. They, they, it's the not system, the system meant to help people in these positions is not helping people in these positions. And when they have nowhere left to turn, that's where, so that's where like that's where like people come like community comes into play right like we should like like, cause, like ideally it wouldn't have to be at this point right i don't want to like go specifically and tell someone's story that's like you know but like basically like if they're supposed to be yeah like yeah all you know like, yeah your takeaway your takeaway from this pitch from matt and i is just that um kitty is the epitome of like i said awesome and um i have i've heard other content creators who have said that their twitter activity is the reason that um they're doing what they're doing now too so to to say that they're inspirational would be an understatement and they're super super anti-poverty which obviously um i'm all for that what did she do just like three days ago on twitter a lot of things i don't know what she she got she got uh she got month let's get like the hashtag monthly stimulus checks she got something trending on twitter by herself man literally it was i walk i woke up in the morning pretty early and i see kitty going ham in a couple of uh, of our group chats i see her twitter feeds going and she's she's telling people man let's get it like we gotta we gotta get this trending like let's do it and so i was like fuck, let's get it like shy was in it she's like let's do it so people started rally like that that's leadership she's a leader man